Hey folks, it's Pat here. i got another chapter 9 question for you, and that's this guy right here, confidence interval for a population proportion. So we've done some confidence intervals already, if you've done the ones with the standard normal and the uh, t distribution. This one is very similar, it just uses a different formula, and um, you have to calculate p, which is different than your mean. So p is just the, uh, the proportion of interest. And so to explain that, let's uh, go through this problem here real quick, and I'll show you how to do it in the Alex calculator, and I'll show you how to do it using the spreadsheet that I uploaded in the Blackboard Module 3, the confidence interval spreadsheet. Oh, you can use that guy for this as well. Either one's fine, but let's show you how to do it both ways. All right, so this example, a sociologist is studying the prevalence of crime in one major city. A sample of 200 randomly selected residents, 60 say they have been victimized by a criminal. Um, based upon this, construct a 90% confidence interval for the portion of all residents in the city who have been victimized by a criminal. Now, you have to read these a little bit more carefully than the other ones, okay? Because sometimes it'll ask you for the proportion of, say, in this case, those who have been victimized. But then sometimes it would ask you for the proportion of those who have not been victimized, okay? And so sometimes you get a little sneaky. Just make sure that you're comparing apples to apples here, all right? And so the first uh, statistic that we need to calculate is the proportion, which is P, all right? And so that's really easy here. So you just take the proportion of interest, in this case 60, and divide it by the sample size, which is 200. So our P in this case is dot three, all right? And then you take P, if you want to do this in the Alex calculator, to, con to calculate the interval, you use this formula here, which is P plus or minus your Z-score lookup, um, times the square root of P times 1 minus P, sometimes this 1 minus P is also called Q, all over N, your sample size. All right, so pretty straightforward formula. Um, easy to punch in the Alex calculator. I'll show you how to do it here real quick. All right, so proportions always use the... Um, um, the Z uh, uh, distribution, so plus or minus, and then our Z table lookup of our alpha, which is just, remember that's the complement of our confidence interval. Um, so our alpha in this case is dot one, but you have to divide that by two because you're looking for an upper roll and lower, so it's Z dot O five in this case. So it's one minus dot nine, okay, which leaves us with dot one, divided by two, because two tails is dot oh five, all right? So hopefully that makes sense by now. So that should be getting pretty intuitive. And then give me an arrow key to the right, and then hit the square root button right here. And now we can punch the rest of this in. Rest of this in. So it's our p dot five, times one minus p, or no, not dot five, dot three, my bad. <laughs> my uh, times one minus p, which you could do in your head real quick, but I'll just write it out the long way here so you see. Okay, so it looks like that. Then hit divided by, and then whatever your sample size is, which in this case is 200. Okay, hit enter, and there we go. We get our upper and lower limits, okay? Notice that these will always be lower than one, okay? And that's because it's a proportion, okay? It's a proportion, so it can't be greater than one, all right? Likewise, it can't be negative, all right? So if you get anything like that in here, you did it wrong, go back and do your math. Uh, double check your math. And so remember that RP in this case was 60 out of 200, which is dot three and so our lower has to be lower than dot three and our upper has to be higher than dot three so lower endpoint to two decimal places in this case is uh oops um come on stop fighting me here so uh zero dot two five and then this one is zero dot three five 0.35 okay hopefully that makes sense um, you know you can do these really quickly in the Alex calculator if you can you know remember the formula maybe write it down when you do the um, um, the ex initial explanation or you can do these in the spreadsheet that I provided in um, blackboard but you need the same information you need to know what P is and so P in this case was 60 divided by 200 was dot oh three or dot three and then you also need to know your confidence level which is 90, and so calculate your alpha, which is uh, 90 um, minus, or one minus 90, which is dot one, okay? And then head on over to the um, confidence interval spreadsheet, which is this guy here. Make sure I'm in this tab right here, which says proportion. And so when it asks you for the proportion, which is sometimes called p hat, that's just that dot three, whatever you calculated based upon that. And then you need your sample size in this one, which I forget because I didn't write that down. <laughs> I'll go back over here. It is 200, okay? 
And so back into the spreadsheet here, 200. And I'm sorry, this one does ask you for the confidence interval, not the alpha. So just put the confidence interval in directly as a decimal, which is dot nine. And now it calculates all this. It calculates your alpha divided by two with probability and your Q. Don't worry about all that stuff. But then it actually does this with the Z table lookup to create that upper and lower. And if we take these and actually take them down to, what does it want, two decimal places? I think it was, we get dot three five and dot two five. So you go back to this and look at it, dot three five and dot two five. Cool, we're all on the same page here. All right, so that one's pretty straightforward. I hope it makes sense. Um, you know, and this is just uh, one of the, uh, the additional uh, confidence interval problems that you'll see here in chapter nine. Uh, if you have any questions on it, please let me know. Otherwise, uh, we'll catch you all in future videos. See you there, bye.